morning lady hey balani good morning hey sa hi anuradha haven't seen you in a bit good morning madhu good morning ish Hey, hope you all have had a good weekend. Um we're going to do some yin today just so that we can stretch ourselves well before we get into a big hectic week. We are I'm not concentrating on any one meridian or uh, I'm not working through uh any emotion. I'm just doing like a full body yin where we'll try and go through target areas like we'll work hamstring we'll work neck we'll work your upper back your trapezius muscles because lots of us are working from home and um, you know this is where we we are usually at our neck and our you know our backs and shoulders so let's get that to work first we'll work into our neck we'll work into our back shoulders wrists and then go down into our belly glutes hamstrings and quads If you have a pair of blocks please keep a pair of blocks with you if you don't it's fine to really thick books are okay if you have like a really low stool you want to keep by so if you want to fold over it that's fine too if you have a yoga strap get a strap if you don't have a strap even like a tie from one of your your dress or your uh, a belt use a belt but just keep one you might need it uh everything else we've got into place So let's start seated. You're going to sit up on a block or on a cushion. Get a single block or if you have a cushion or a low stool, just sit up. Even if you have like a great cross-legged seated position, I want you to sit up just to keep your hips elevated. Okay? So sit up on a block. You're only going to sit for 90 seconds. Long deep breaths. I'm setting you on your timer. Keep your chest lifted. Try and give me longer exhalations. So if you're going to inhale for three, try and exhale for six if you can. If that's not possible, just slightly longer is okay. Longer exhales always work on relaxing your nervous system. If you're comfortable, eyes closed. If you're not. That's fine too. Keep it open. Your jaw is relaxed. Your tongue is relaxed. Even if your eyes are closed, your gaze is relaxed. Soften the gaze. Just quick do a quick scan through your body. If you've tightened anything, sometimes unconsciously we tense through a muscle group. Relax it. You want to drop your chin slightly? Feel free to do so. to a neck for a minute on each side. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. It's called the graceful bow. You can sit in any comfortable position. Again, you can continue sitting on your block or you want to take vajrasana, you can do vajrasana. If you want to just kneel down, kneel down, cushion your knees, choose a position that's going to be comfortable for you. We're going to stretch the right side of our neck, okay? So I'm going to sit it this way. It's going to be the right side of the neck. So my right hand is going to go to my back. Okay? It's so right hand to the back and my left hand is on my thigh. I'm going to hold my left hand with the right palm if you can. If you can't, it's okay just place your right hand on your back. 
you're stretching the right side of your neck so what I want you to do is turn your chin to the left slightly so we are center turn it out to the left slightly and then drop your head gently you're stretching the right side of your neck From the center, we turn our chin to the left just about maybe 40, 45 degrees and then get the drop. Last 10 seconds. Very slowly come up. We have the other side, so we're going to go into our left side of our neck. So we're going to take our left hand to our lower back. As far as you can, just don't let the left shoulder roll off to the back. You still want to be facing forward, okay? Right hand is on my thigh. You can hold your right arm with your left palm. If you can't, it's fine. It's just about keeping the hand at the back to keep your shoulder down. Now I'm going to turn my chin slightly. Good morning, Mona. I'm going to turn my chin slightly to my right. So again, about 40, 45 degrees. And then I'm going to drop. So stretching the left side of my neck. It's your choice, you want to keep your eyes closed, feel free to do so. Next one, we're going to go into our trapezius muscles, the muscles, you know, on the back here. So you're going to start, again, sit in any comfortable position. If sitting cross leg is what works for you, sit cross leg. You want to sit on a chair, please feel free to do so, okay? Or you sit on a block. Okay, so we're going to start. Give yourself a nice big hug. Okay, so nice big hug. So right elbow on the top and go really tight. Okay, let's take 10 here. Exhale, go even tighter, nine. So your shoulder blades are now going away from each other. Okay, your back is slightly rounded, eight, seven. Come on, hug yourself even tighter, six, five, four, three, two. Now from here, you're going to give me eagle hands. If this is all you can do, this is where you'll be. If you can go all the way, that is where you're going to be. Now you're going to choose. Your hands can stay up here, they go up higher, they come down lower, or you round your back and you fall. Remember the target area, your upper back, okay? Again, we'll stay for 90 seconds. So your timer is set, let's go, we're here, like I said, if you feel like you're getting a good stretch here, or like they say in the stress in your trapezius area, which is this, then that's where you'll stay, then you'll stay here. 
if you feel like you know you need to stay here this is okay too or you wrong with your hand you can try them all Oops. and then see the one that gives you the best Stay, you're not done yet. Hi, Sonal. Hi, Raksha. Good morning, Sonali. You'll have another five seconds to go. Let's take it to the other side. So, left arm on the top, nice big hug first, go as tightly as you can. Inhale, exhale, go even tighter. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. From here, we'll take eagle hands. Again, if this is all the mobility you have, it is fine. You will still feel it in the trapezius area, your upper back area. For those of you who can, you'll go into full Garudasana. You might have done it one way on the other side. It is okay to have another variation on this side. Maybe it's just your bones are set differently on this side. Because it's not just, like I've always said, it's not just skeletal variations. There are variations from one side to the other. So choose what works best for this side. So if you were all the way here on the other side, maybe it's not possible. Then you stay here. Lift it higher, lift it lower, find the one that works best for you. Think of the area behind your uh, shoulder blades, you know those muscles around your shoulder blades behind, slightly higher here, get that to work. You want to just round your back and stay here. This is okay too. Remember target area, that's all. And again, your eagle hands don't have to be back in center of your face. Taking it off to one side might be what you need the most. So maybe that's what you need to do, maybe the other side. So find the one that works for your trapezius your upper back muscles. And gently release. Take a few moments, relax into those arms, the neck gets your shoulders to move a little. This is what we are doing. It's called the lounging monkey. Yeah, Ian has some really cool names. Okay, so you're gonna, we're gonna sit like this, interlock again, you don't have to Always keep it like a tight interlock. You can even release your palms, okay? So you're going to interlock, place your palms down, okay? Or even palms flat. You do not have to interlock, like I said. Okay, I'm going to go with the palms not interlock option. So I'm here. I'm just going to move back a little bit so you can see. Okay, so I'm here. And very gently, we are working the chest and the front of our shoulders, okay? I'm going to lift my hip. I'm going to move forward. I think I can go more. I'm going to move forward. Okay, if that's all you can go, then this is where you're going to stay. You're just going to hang here. Okay, now this can also be done against a wall, which is why I've set my mat up against the wall. So, 
Uh, I don't know if you can, how far you can see, but your hands will be on the wall like this, okay? And then you can slide or sit on a chair if you have to. When I do it on the wall, I like to just sit on my heels and then I drop my head. Okay, or you keep your hands on your back and sit on a chair or a stool. Okay, so let's go. 90 seconds. So remember how you go in and out? If you can interlock, interlock, otherwise palms are flat. How far or how close your palms are, it depends on the orientation of your shoulders. And then you'll move. I'm move my hands back a little bit. Lift your hip up, move forward. Lift your hip up, move forward. And forward. You stay here. Straight leg, it doesn't matter what's happening in your legs. And you stay. Elbows locked, not locked. Palms wider, closer, shoulders caving in, open out, doesn't matter. Remember, you're working into the shoulders, the inside of your arm. And just stay. Even continue to keep your knees bent. This is okay too. We've got 25 seconds to go. Take a few breaths here. Connect with what's happening in your shoulders, your arms, your neck, your upper back. Feel the sensations, the heat, the coolness. Take a few more breaths here. We're going to go to the front of our body, so the chest, to your belly. We're also working a back bend, which means that there's going to be a contraction in your lower back. When you do back bends, that's what it is. Your back, your lower, the, your back will have a contraction. It is okay, unless of course it's extremely painful, then you back off. If it's just like feeling like a bit of a strain. You know, there's always a good strain and a bad strain. Eat, you know, we should be the only ones who can figure that out for ourselves. That little strain is okay. So we're going to do seal or sphinx. Most of us have done this before. I'm going to give you a whole lot of options. So this is seal. You're going to lie on your and sphinx. You're going to lie on your belly. Four arms down. Okay. So the further away your arms are, the less passive your back bend is. Okay. So the closer your elbows come to your chest, the higher your chest, and there is more of a back bend. You're going to choose. We're here for two and a half minutes, okay? So you can do a seal for some time and then change to sphinx if you want to. Uh, if you want to use seal as the option, you're up on your forearms. Shoulders in your ears, that does not matter. The closer your palms come in, the higher your seal, the bigger your back bend. Just remember what we are working. We are working the frontal chain of our body. Okay, target area, chest, belly. So you want to stay up. If you want to use a block, you can do this. If you want to use a block, place your head instead. But remember, you're still working on this leg. So don't rest all the way and take away from target area.
glutes relax. It doesn't matter which direction your feet go to, pointing to the back, toes curled in, toes going out to the sides. It doesn't matter. None of it matters for, for this class, this posture. So find the spot where your feet are comfortable. For a lot of us, feet turning out slightly just releases a bit of tension. Not tension, actually compression from our lower back. So if you want to turn your feet out a little bit, that's fine. If you want to keep your feet flat, that's okay too. If you've tightened your glutes, relax it a little bit. That little bit of engagement, 20-30% is okay if you feel that gives you some kind of support. Don't go further because to go all tight and yang in this posture and hold for a long time and you let release it doesn't feel so great. Last 30 seconds. pillow with your hands and just stay down for a bit. The urge to turn over and pull your thighs into your chest will be there. Let's keep that away for now. Okay, you created a back bend shape. Let the back bend remain. If you're not comfortable lying on your belly, please flip over and lie on your back, but don't pull your thighs into your chest. Take a few moments here. And roll over to your side, come and sit up. This is what we're gonna do next, okay? So if you have blocks, you can use a cushion or a towel also if you need, for, need to for this. It's called deer pose. I'm just going to sit slightly off center so when I twist you can see. My right shin is kind of parallel to the shorter end of my mat. Okay, almost like you're doing pigeon pose. Uh, again, it doesn't have to stay here. I'm just giving you some basic shape and then you work into it. Now my left leg is so. If I was sitting down, this is how my left leg is here. Right leg is here. Okay. So there. So my left knee, right heel are kind of touching each other. If you need your right leg to go in further and you can't do a right angle, that's okay. Not important. What is important though is this twist that we're going to get into. This is called deer pose. You're going to work into a twist. Deer works into your glute. It works spinal torsion and if you take your arm a certain way, you'll even get upper back. Okay. First things first, so we've got our right shin, everyone, parallel to the shorter end of our mat, left leg going back, we're going to fold forward. Okay, so from forward, I'm going to walk my hands out to my right side, so my chest and belly will be on the right eye. So here, so I'm going to move back now, so you can see, so legs, I'm hoping you'll have the position, so here. 
okay, you can stay here. Okay, because it's still working a twist. So you can stay here, you can use a block for your chest, block for your head. Two and a half minutes, okay? If you can go further, you will go further. If you want to take your left arm across, take your left arm across and stay. So then you'll get the upper back on the left. But remember not to take away from the twist. And that's what's important. Okay, so the legs are in position. You fall forward first, and then you turn towards your right, and you can continue staying here. You will get a lot of right glute while you're doing this. And then you can twist and stay here. Use the block for your head. Right hand can be wherever is comfortable and hold. Long, deep breaths in your belly. Two and a half minutes on each side. If you don't want the block, you don't need to use it. You can place your head on your mat. Stay hold and breathe. Hi Ritu, how are you? Good morning Hasika. After a few moments, if you feel you can go in further, then uh, exhale, go in further. For those of you who've just come in, good morning Priyal. We're working deer pose, which is a glute stretch and uh, a spinal torsion. So you start like with your right leg, like you would go into pigeon pose, your left leg is going back. We're trying to work heel, right heel, left knee to kind of touch. Fold forward first and then slowly move your body towards your right side. And then stay wherever it's comfortable for you. If you feel you'll get more of a twist by lifting your right glute up, that is fine. Then lift into the right glute. You have to be able to stay for the time that has been decided. So choose what works best for you. You can even take your left arm through under so you can get a little bit of a stretch in your left upper back. side of my mat, the front of my mat. My right leg is going to turn back, right knee touching my left heel. Also once you go into position, if you want to straighten your right leg out towards the back, depending on which one will give you the better twist, that's what you want to go with, okay? So we're going to fold forward first. So first I'm folding my chest over my right calf and my right shin, so I'm going forward. Only then am I going to take it towards over my left thigh so I am here so remember you want to get the twist that is important I'm going to move back a little bit okay so getting the twist is important because that's what we are working we are working a spinal torsion and then if you want take your right hand through you will also be working into your left glute and then stay Long deep breaths, cushion for your head, cushion for maybe even resting your chest if you need it, do it. Block, book. Pillow. You can 
actually even roll up a mm. towel, like a nice big bath towel, roll it up into a tight roll and you can place your head on it. Remember, we are working a twist and into the left glute. The right upper back is secondary. Feet relaxed, glutes relaxed. Your last minute. Neck, jaw relaxed. Hi, Bina. Good morning. Hey, Pavan. Good morning. Hi Sate, welcome back. It's your last 20 seconds. Hi Daphne. I'm hoping y'all are in the posture. I'm saying hi to you. I've done my practice. It's your turn now. slowly untwist yourself and rely on your belly or your back. Just feel all that energy flow into the area you've just worked, connect with what's happening, uh, stay in a comfortable position like I said last week and if you weren't here, uh, this is called a rebound position and the rebound position, you can stay down and listen to me is as sacred in a yin practice as the practice or the shape you're creating. What happens in a rebound is when you hold your yin shapes for a certain amount of time and they're always usually long holes, is that you're working really deep into your connective tissues and your fascia, your joints, your muscles, and you've gone all the way in. And then when you finish, you want to lay down and lay really still for a short bit just so that that connective tissue and fascia can recoil and go back to the original shape, better quality because you've moved into it and rubbed into it, uh, stretched it out but you want it to stay relaxed so breathe into it, take a few more moments Roll on to a side, come up into seated. Okay, so we're going to stand. Okay, we're going to go into our hamstring. These are your options. We're holding hamstring for three minutes. Okay. Three minutes for your hamstrings. These are your options. Option one, seated. Of course, it's called the caterpillar. So you sit up. Straight legs, maybe hip width slightly wider, slightly closer, whatever works for you. Remember target area, back of your legs. Okay, you round your back, you hang. Your hands are here, we're hanging, you're not engaging. You want to use your blocks, your cushions, a stool. You want to stay here, stay here, you want to stay here, stay here. Okay, that's your option one, it's called the caterpillar. Option two is you're just going to hang. So, feet you decide your comfortable distance, you're just hanging here, you hold opposite elbows if you want to, or you can even pile a block or two and rest your head on it and stay. Hamstrings, okay? Another option is to go towards a wall. 
So my heels are away from the wall. I'm going to get my glute to just about. My butt is just about touching the wall. And then I'm going to hang. Okay, hands here, hands here. Again, you can use the block to rest your head. Option four, you flip this. So the back of your head and your back is on the wall. So you go in this way. Be careful when you're doing this. So you're here. And then you hang. So hands here, hands here. Again, you can use the block to rest your head and you stay here, okay? You can try them all. See which one gives you the best stress in your hamstrings. Remember I said stress in yin yoga is a good word. It's a positive word. So you want to feel this in the back of your legs, your hamstrings. So find the one that works for you. And I've said this before and I know I say it in every class. Maybe you chose one version last week. It might not be the one that you need this week. So choose wisely. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to just hang. Maybe I'll use the block to rest my head. back to your breath. Try and work that exhalation to be slightly longer than your inhalation. Good morning Sunil. Hi Patricia, how are you? Keep breathing. Check in with that target area. Your weight can be in your toes, in your heels. If you need to soften your knees a little bit, do it. If you need to lock out your knees, do it. So find the one that works best for you. seconds to go. Just stay really still. Let gravity do its job. Stay there, stay there. Very slowly, just lower yourselves back down into your mat. Sit down, let your chin stay dropped. Take a few moments here. Okay, quads. I've been giving you lots of options with saddle pose in quads. So these ones. We're going to try something new today. If what we try doesn't work for you, you can come back to this, okay? Single leg or both legs, your choice. What we are doing is single leg. It's called the King Arthur. And yes, if you've been in class with me, you know this one's my favorite. I love this quad stretch. Okay, so this is what, uh, if you need a chair to keep your hand on, get one. So everyone, we're going to stretch our right quad. Okay, so right quad, you will get a bit of right flexor with right quad. 
So use a towel or a cushion or uh, if you have a knee pad or knee pad to place your right knee. And also try and place this, the top of your right knee down instead of the middle. The middle is usually very sensitive. So this part of your knee if you can, okay? So this one's going to go there. You can keep your blocks close if you want to. And I'm placing my right knee on it. And the right shin, this is the shin. The right shin is as close to the wall as possible. And my left foot is up in front here. Now, if this is really intense, this is where you're going to stay. You can keep blocks. Or you can also keep a stool or a chair and stay. If you think you can come up higher, you can be here or again, chair, stool, two blocks. You can stay here, hands on the blocks, right quads, okay? I also know there are some of you who like to straighten their left leg to get a better stretch in their right quads. So yeah, for those of you who need the left leg extended to get a better stretch, that's okay too. Hands hanging, hands up, straight up. Remember your target area, don't take away from it, you know, while trying to get into a really advanced version of this shape. For those of you who King Arthur does not work, you can try this. Right leg, here, like this. Right foot turning out or out flat, you can stay here or you lie down. You place, you can go straight down flat, you go down flat or use the block. Okay, if you want a little more sometimes, I don't, I don't find the difference for people. Placing their knees slightly elevated gives them a better stretch in their courts. So if you're one of them, Feel free to do it. Just remember what you're working, okay? Also in King Arthur, you don't have to go all the way. Even here is okay. So it's almost like you're doing a lunge position and you're sinking and your foot is resting on the wall, you will still get a lot of quad here. And I have actually, this is another one I forgot, so if you can still watch, I had someone actually do it this way and said they got the best stretch here. She kept two blocks and rested her chest on it. So well, this will happen. You learn something from every class. So lots of times I watch someone making a shape for a certain target area. And I'd be like, mm, I've never seen that before. And then I'd ask her, you know, where do you feel it? And she'd be like, okay, quads. And then it's right. Very slowly come out of it. I'm going to try another variation. Please do so. You might need a completely different shape on this side. So we are all going into our left quads, our quads at the front of our thigh. Just remember, left knee on the towel, cushion, knee pad. Left shin, which is the spoon going down below from below your knee down. Left shin as close to the wall as you can. Option one is we're going to be here. Option two, you can come up, leave your hands on a chair or a stool, or straight up, or hands on the blocks. Arms up. Or you can do a version of saddle, which is our left leg is going to be turned up this way. Foot pointed back to the side you decide. You can sit up straight and marinate into that left thigh or you lie down flat or on blocks and continue to marinate into that left thigh.
remember you will also have the option to elevate your left knee so you want to keep a block under to, if you feel you get a better stretch. So be it. There's no right and there's no wrong. So it's your yoga, it's your body. Figure the one that gives you the best stretch for the front of your left thigh. Also the version of the lunge, so your left foot is on the wall and you're not as close to the wall like this. You move forward and sink. The 30 seconds to go. Last 10. Take a few moments. We're going to go into our hip flexors. Uh, for me, I know I keep doing hip flexors, but it's a really, really important part, often ignored part of our bodies. Is this part, the front of our hips. Also, with all the sitting down we do, hip flexors always get tight. And we have through the last uh, two weeks, if you've done class before, uh, the life class, we've been working this posture called the dragon when it came to hip flexors. This one. Okay, so you're on a low lunge, cushion your right knee, we're all working our right hip flexor so you can stay here or you stay up here, you can even keep a block under your hip so you rest your left butt on the block and you stay here, okay? Right hip flexor. I don't usually give this variation because lots of times everyone really gets very excited about this variation and forgets the target area, but I'm going to throw in a new one for today just for fun. But remember, it's a great one to work, it's very exciting, great picture if you want to Instagram it <laughs> for your social media, it's a good picture to take. But you don't want to take away from your right hip flexor. Don't make it about the hamstrings, this is hip flexor, okay? So we're here. You can use the blocks if you want to rest your hands. Right leg is going to go up. Everyone, right hip flexor, so right leg up. It's like you're going to do a standing split and you move your left leg to where it works. You want to bend your right knee, you want to lift it up higher, you work it. You can even go like maybe here. Okay, you will still get right hip flexor. You have that option. It's called the giraffe. Remember I said choose the one that works best for your right hip flexor the front of your right hip. Let's go. You're going to be here for two minutes. I'm going to stay with the dragon. It gives me the best stretch in my right hip. But like I said, feel free to do that standing split. So, right leg back. You can stay here. You can even take both hands down and keep your hands on the block. Toes curled in or out, doesn't matter. But when you do this, if it goes away from your right hip flexor and goes and you feel it more in your left hip, then you need to change the shape, okay? Block under the left foot if you want to just like kind of rest. So, maybe you can even lift your right hand up, get a little side bend to see 
if that gives you a little more in your right hip flexor. Sometimes just taking the right arm across the left thigh will give you even more in your right hip flexor. Just remember target area. If your right knee is sensitive, then you'll want to place a block or a cushion under your right knee. Or you can call your right toes in, that sometimes works. your last 30 seconds. Last 10, if your glutes are active, relax it. If you're biting into your teeth, relax it. We're going to take it to the other side. I'm going to show you the other options also, just in case you want to try it on the left side. So you have the dragon family that you can work with, or you can go into the standing split. Left hip flexor, which is the front of your left hip, okay? So we're here, right foot in front, left leg going up. So if this gives you a really big hip flexor stretch at this distance, this is where you'll stay. If going closer to the wall is what you need, that's what you'll do. You want to go all the way in, hands down around the blocks. That's where you'll sit. Knee bent, if that's what gives you hip flexor, feel free to do it. If going down here and hanging here gives you hip flexor, then do it. You'll place your hands on blocks and stay, okay? And like I said, I'm going to be looking dry. Left hip, you have two minutes, let's get done. Please use the knee pad or a towel or a cushion for your left knee. Sink into your left hip, find the spot, hands down. Right foot can go out a little bit. Whatever gives you the best. I'll come all the way up, stay here. Use a block to rest your right hip on. Jaw soft, gaze soft. Belly soft. forgotten about those long exhalations, come back to it. Twenty seconds to go. Very slowly, gently. out in front of you. Just let your feet flop round your back and just hang here. Take 10 breaths here. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
three, two, and one. Come up. We're going to do one last one. And uh, just to get into our calves, okay? So if you have two tennis balls, they work really well. Or I've already rolled up my mat really tight. So my mat is rolled up really tightly. Even a towel, like use two towels rolled up tight. You're going to kneel down. I'm going to show it to you like this. And you're going to place the towel, mat, tennis ball, whatever you choose, directly behind your knee. So in that crease. Okay, so we're here. It's a really short one. Okay, this one. So we're here. As close to the back of your knee as you can. And then, if you have tight calves, this is a painful one, but it's really good. And you're going to sit. Okay, it's painful. Relax, breathe only for 10. I'll tell you what to do. Nine. Eight. Seven. Sink your hips. Breathe into your belly. Five. Four, three, two, two more breaths, one. Now slowly come up and then roll it slightly lower. So now it's not directly behind your knee. It's like another spot in your cups. Stay. If you still want it to be behind your knee, let it be there. Ten, nine. Eight, seven, if the top of your feet feel sensitive, cushions under your feet. Five, four, three, two, lift your hips, roll down a little further. One, two, this is like using the roller massage in your calves, okay? You also get hamstring while you're doing this. Three, it's like myofascial release. Four, <laughs> five, and I said, stay at the spot that you need it the most. Six, seven, you're nearly done. Come on, eight, nine, ten. Very slowly take the mat or your tennis ball or your towel out. Shake your legs out. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Cross your legs this way or just this way or half lotus, whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Just round your back, drop your head and stay. You can use a block or a cushion for your forehead. Just round. Take long deep breaths. Breathe in your belly. If you're comfortable, your eyes will stay close. If you're biting your teeth, relax that. Nice big inhale, and you're going to exhale out from your mouth. Okay, so let's go in. One more time, in. One last one, nice big inhale. Exhale through your mouth. Slowly come up. Thank you. Have a great week ahead. We have some fabulous classes lined up for you. I'm hoping to see you again soon. Hi Sneha, how are you?